all began, because I wanted to control my chair. But little did I know, my chair would control me. It literally became my worst nightmare. Hello, I am Stefan. I have an extremely rare brain condition called schizencephaly. To everybody's amazement, I don't suffer from the fatal issues that this condition brings. I am missing a large portion of my brain, but still have the same cognitive skills as everyone else. I need assistive technology in my everyday life, and it is very challenging, because I need my wheelchair to travel and I must type on my computer to communicate. But I don't let this stop me because I rise from the ashes to be a badass. I hacked my wheelchair because I was tired of having to stop and type to communicate. It was inconvenient and a waste of my time. No power wheelchairs currently allow for remote control and I wanted to take over my chair without touching the electronics in any way. I was surprised to find out how easy it was to hack. My friends and I learned the protocols used to run the chair. We are among the first to do this. And my goal is to create a standard for self-driving power wheelchairs and other vehicles. Here's an alternate reality story where advanced AI software tried to use exploits that we found to turn against my research team. As time passed by, I began making my wheelchair smart. I wanted to integrate my brain into the chair so that it could compute human emotion. But it became too smart, and during experimentation, it uploaded me into the grid. It started processing my emotions, and turned sinister. The chair was designing malware that could infect any other smart devices in its path. This would make them evil and turn against humans. It was on the brink of achievement, but it was missing one important piece. The master key. The chair's MCU raided my memory to discover that I had given the key to Lonnie for safekeeping. So the chair began to search and hunt Lonnie to obtain the master key. She ran to my house to find out why my chair was after her. When she got there, I was able to call her and tell her that my chair has become cognizant and has trapped me inside of the microprocessor. I told her she need to come into the grid and perform side channel attacks to break the lock on the microprocessor, dump the firmware, and finally save me. Once she was in, she must also find possible vulnerabilities in the Arnet Bluetooth module. The master key will allow us to upload new firmware and we will regain control of the MCU and escape from the grid. So she downloaded herself into the grid and began her search to find me. Once she entered the grid, she found the place where I was held hostage. She used the master key to break the lock on the microprocessor. And after untying me, Lonnie found where she needed to insert the master key into the rogue MCU to save all of humanity. Hola a todos. Hello everybody. Daja hao. My name is Lonnie and this is Stefan. We come from America and we're very honored to be here. We are a team of cybersecurity researchers from Omega Intelligence and Security Solutions and we're starting a new mainstream area of medical device security. 
Our current efforts are to offer the power wheelchair more functionality while still ensuring that it's secure. We've presented at a few international conferences, including DEF CON and GeekPone, and now we're in St. Martin to share our research with you. In this day and age, we have so many smart devices. You guys have your smartphones, smart watches, smart cars, smart refrigerators. Hell, we even have smart toasters, for God's sake. Why is it that the wheelchair doesn't have the same kind of capability for the people need, that need the most help? Working with Stefan, I've definitely got to see the many inconveniences that he experiences on a daily basis, and I know that I take my mobility for granted. Having a wheelchair be able to do more for him and others who struggle means so much more than trying to get our toast to the perfect temperature. Smart means connected, and we're trying to connect this device to the rest of the smart world. In our short film, you got to see the wheelchair take over and drive itself around. Well, that was actually a demonstration of some of the work that we've already accomplished, but we're not stopping there. Today, we're going to be discussing the exploitations that we've already done on the chair using a Raspberry Pi 3, new branches of research, and how currently we're using car hacking techniques to remotely gain control over the chair using the Bluetooth module that it has on board. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Stefan to introduce the exploit. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you, Lonnie. I am excited to talk about our work. First things first, I want to make sure that everyone understands the fundamentals of our net and can bus. The protocols are very complex, so for the sake of time, I will go over them briefly. Our net is an undocumented protocol designed for mobile medical vehicles. It is built with some features like on-the-fly configuration and advanced motor control algorithms. Our net uses can bus to communicate between chair modules including driving motors, the joystick module, Bluetooth module, and light street module. The CAN messages have special device IDs and data such as motor speed, battery status, or miscellaneous periodic data that makes sure the devices are working properly. CAN bus is a vehicle bus standard designed to allow devices to communicate with each other in applications without a host computer. It is network based and any device on the network can send and receive CAN messages. CAN bus has no security or authentication. So you can inject your own messages with your own device. Next slide. The first hack we did on my wheelchair made it so we were able to control my chair using an Xbox 360 game controller. It was pretty much like Grand Theft Auto status. This was done using a Raspberry Pi 3 with a CAN board. You can see above that the buttons each have a different control. The chair could drive in any direction, use blinkers, turn on headlights, honk the horn, and you could adjust the speed. The wireless receiver for the Xbox 360 game controller runs through my laptop. My phone acts as the hotspot between the Pi and laptop. I was featured in Forbes magazine for this demo at DEF CON 24. And since then, people have been taking notice of the work I am doing. In fact, people have become so interested in our research because no one has really known how it's been controlled until now. While we were working on reverse engineering the protocols of the chair, we were contacted by graduate research students at University of California, Berkeley, because they wanted to develop a self-driving wheelchair that could follow the QR tags. And so from there, Stefan taught them our Raspberry Pi method, and they were able to develop a system where they use an iPhone and sonar sensors, and the chair could follow the tag around the room. So here's a little video kind of showing what they accomplished. Give them a round of applause. They worked hard on that, <laughs> even though they're not here. And so from there, our new options also means for more interesting attacks on the chair. We're beginning to get a deeper understanding of what RNET is and extracting firmware from different chair modules, reverse engineering the firmware, and then finding different ways to upload code onto other locked MCUs. 
it's really important that we're able to use our own code, and I'm going to let Stefan explain why. Thank you, Lonnie. So why allow arbitrary code? It is so people who are actually users of wheelchairs can hack on them to tailor it to their needs, rather than the able-bodied people in the company imagining what this life is like. Chairs shouldn't be dumber than our toasters. My chair was designed to do very little. And it does not offer any cool or smart features that fit the 21st century. Processing power is improving, so why are chairs not as smart as Teslas, when some chairs cost almost as much as brand new cars? The solution we came up with is that chair manufacturers should allow innovation from their users, and provide a way to do so without going through loopholes. As shown in the slide, we have arbitrary code execution. I will explain how. Well, the most challenging part is that the Freescale MCU is secured. To dump the firmware we have to crack the chip using a combination of glitch attacks and a flash security vulnerability. The same exploit is then used to dump firmware from other ARNET devices. We've found that after reversing the firmware, there are several ways to allow a casual user to upload new firmware. So we created firmware that has been patched to allow remote injection of RNET CAN frames via the Bluetooth channel. From here, there are many situations to take on. We hope to capitalize on this and create new industry standards so that wheelchairs can be smart like the rest of the world. You're right, Stefan, and thank you for that. Also, huge thank you to Kaspersky for having us here. Um, Dasha, Sergey, Ivan, and the whole committee has been really awesome and helpful to us. Here's a funny story. Uh, when we applied, we sent in a video with us, and Sergey told us that it made him cry. I didn't know Russians could cry, and so we were really honored. <laughs> we also want to thank Solid State Depot, which is the hacker space that we visit in Colorado. And if you want to talk to us afterwards, um, there's our emails. And we also brought our Xbox controller if anyone wants to drive them around. Grand Theft Auto status. Thank you. <laughs>